Good morning. This is Prophetess Dr. Sandra Ingram from the Rebuilding the Walls Ministry. So glad you are with us on today. We pray that the message on today will be a blessing to you on this week to strengthen you and encourage you and give you some words to live by. Right now, we will open with a prayer and our scripture from Elder Michael Ingram. Good morning. Let us pray. God, we thank you for life, health, and strength. God, we praise you for who you are because you are the most holy God. God, we want you to know that we're grateful that you love us and have done all that you have done for us. And by us, I mean creation, humanity. God, you've been good to us. You've made ways for us. Now, God, I ask that you would reach out through this broadcast, touch those that you can reach, those that will look to you, God. Enlighten someone, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. We'll be reading from the book of John, 17th chapter, I'll start at the first verse. Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, your hour has come. Glorify your son, that your son also may glorify you. As you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given to him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. For I have given to them the words which you have given me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came forth from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them, I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. And all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you. Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I have kept, and none of them is lost except the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your world, word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. 
and the glory which you gave me, I have given them that they may be one just as we are one. I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which you have given me, for you loved me yes. before the foundation yes. of the world. Yes. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known that you sent me. And I have declared to them your name and will declare it, that the love with which you love me may be in them and I in them. That was the entire chapter of John 17. Amen. Amen. May God add a blessing to his red word. Um, could you give us a song, Elder? Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, early in the morning a song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Holy, 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 all the saints adore thee, casting down their golden crowns around the glassy sea. Cherubim and seraphim falling down before thee, who was and are evermore shall be. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Today, or for a few minutes, um, I would like to bring your attention. We, uh, Elder uh, Ingram has already read the entire chapter of John 17. And so we want to explore some of the verses in this chapter to see what God is telling us and what he wants us to know. Now, um, John, the 17th chapter, you know, this was right before, this was uh, during the time when Jesus was in the upper room with the disciples, and he was telling the disciples that it was time for him to leave, and, uh, you know, they were still not quite understanding, but, and if that was in the 15th, 16th chapter, but, you know, in the 17th chapter, this chapter is where Jesus prayed. Okay, now the Sermon on the Mount, we call it the Lord's Prayer, but it was really, it is the prayer that Jesus gave the disciples to pray. But in John 17, this is Jesus praying to the Lord. And briefly for a moment, I want to talk to you about kept by God's power. And if I had a subtopic would be Jesus prayed for me. And so God's power, remember, can't come out of you unless it is within you. You have to be confident and know that you are God's property. The enemy does not have any power over you. You are bought and paid for by the blood of Jesus and no weapon formed against you shall prosper. 
God has deliverance for every captive. He lives so much for you that he says, and he listens to you and he loves you and he wants to help you and he's there for you. And he says in Isaiah 65 and 24, before they call, I will answer. Kept by the power of God. Jesus prayed for you. You know, there's a song out that says, somebody prayed for me. And that could have, that's awesome. It could have been your mother. It could have been your grandmother. It could have been your auntie or uncle or friend. But it's nothing like Jesus praying for you. So when the enemy comes up against you, you can say, oh, no, 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 no. Jesus has already prayed for me. And before I call on him, he will answer. So don't turn this, this, don't turn God away. So this entire chapter of John 17 is Jesus' prayer. Now, number one, he prays for himself. He prays for the disciples and he prays for the church. So, you know, it's all right to pray for yourself. Sometimes we have to get an alignment and repent and get ourselves together before we start to pray for others. What did he pray for? Oh, okay. He prayed that God will help us on this journey and teach us how to be cognizant of the enemy and where he is. So, Jesus keeps his believers safe. He keeps us safe. So, uh, Elder, would you read John 17 and 3 again? Okay, John 17, 3. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Amen. So verse 17 and three is telling this, by knowing God, you know him through the son. So it matters the relationship that you have with Jesus to get to the father. And so he's telling us, he's praying. And Jesus is saying, God, help them. I've taught them that eternal life requires a personal relationship with me. And I want them to understand that. And I want them to know that we need to be in relationship. And if they sin, they need to repent just to get back into the right space. Because when we repent, Christ loves us. And excuse me, he lives in us. And he lives in us by the power of the Holy Spirit. So. Jesus asked the disciples in verse 11 to be united in harmony. And he said, protect them by the power of your name. So they will be united just as we are. So Jesus wanted us to live in harmony and to be in united. And he was praying with the father, God, I've taught them this, but I need for you to reinforce it to them. I'm standing here. I'm their mediator. The prayers come to me and then they go to you. So would you read verse 11, Elder? Okay. John 17, 11. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you. Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me that they may be one as we are. So Jesus prayed, Lord, help of God. You know, I have a relationship with you and they have a relationship with me. Protect them, keep them. Jesus is praying for you. He is your intercessor. And then in verse 13, he tells us to have joy. That's the common thing. We know that the joy of the Lord is our strength. It's not happy. It's joy. 
And the key to immeasurable joy is living an intimate relationship with Jesus, being in contact with him, talking to him, knowing who he is, knowing his word. When we do the will, we experience God's special care. We experience his protection. And we see the victory that God brings when we are in situations where it seems like we are going to be defeated. But remember, some, not somebody prayed for you. Jesus prayed for you that God would keep the enemy from you and protect you and that you would be safe. Elder, could you read verse 17? Verse 17, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Okay, so God, Jesus said, God, make them holy, sanctify them, help them. He's saying that as followers of Christ, we become pure and holy through obeying the word of God and being obedient to God and following the word and having that relationship with him. So scripture puts us puts out, well, what scripture says is that it, when we sin, we need to repent. But that sin, that repentance should motivate us to confess. And when we sin, we confess and renew our relationship with God and with Christ. And that guides us back to him. So when we get out of right standing with God and right relationship with God, we repent and we renew our relationship with God. Jesus prayed for all who would follow him. He prayed for unity. He prayed for protection from the evil one for you. Would you read uh, verse 20, Elder? Verse 20. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. Verse 21, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. Amen. So here we are. Jesus praying, give them power. Fill them with the Holy Spirit, God, so that they can do the work, kingdom work, to draw people unto you. Give them the strength. Protect them from the evil one. Help them to believe. Help them to repent. Knowing that Jesus prayed for you should make you confident as you work toward the kingdom. Knowing that Jesus prayed for you should remind you when you come up against the Pharaohs in your land to say, tell them that I am sent me. Because you know that if Jesus prayed for you, he got a prayer through and that the father heard him. Jesus greatest desire was that the disciples and that we are disciples of Christ, not just then, but nowadays, would become one. He wanted unity for the disciples. He wanted unity among them. And he wanted unity for the church. And that's what we need to work for, being united with Jesus, being united with God, being united with each other for one cause. And that's to build the kingdom of God. He wanted harmony. Because when we are on one accord and we are uniform, we are powerful witnesses of God's love. That's what he wanted to be. Somebody, God has already prayed for you. And remember, you are kept 
by the power of God. And this prayer that Jesus prayed, read it. When you're down, read it. When you can't find a way out, read it. When the enemy is on your chair, read it. And know what Jesus has already prayed for you as your intercessor. And know then that you have the victory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. So that is our word for the day. We pray that something was said that we have pricked your heart and that you go and read this John 17 over again. This is the Lord's prayer for all of us. And we need to know what Jesus prayed for us and how he prayed on our behalf so that we could live holy and not just holy, but we live in victory. So if you need prayer, uh, please, uh, you know, contact us. We ask you to subscribe if this message has been a blessing to you. And we thank you for your time. And we pray God's blessings on you for the rest of this week. To God be the glory. Be blessed.